YouTube and welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop. This should be the final part in getting this Tormach 1100MX completely assembled and up and running. I know I've got the same shirt on, but hey, trust me, it's been a week, it's been in the laundry, it's been washed, and we are ready to go with the automatic tool changer. So uh, I know reading the instructions, I should be hooking up the PathPilot console at this point, and I should be testing this machine, making sure that it is operational. But the parts aren't coming in in the exact order in the manual, so we're going to try doing them out of order. If I uh, run into a problem, run into a roadblock, then uh, hey, that'll be on me. I'm going out of the order of the manual from Tormach. But what I have in stock today is the automatic tool changer, and the PathPilot console is in. It's at the warehouse. Uh, it should be shipping out in the next day or so. So eventually I should have that before I put this video out. Um, I'll make sure that I have that and we'll complete it. But we are going to go a little bit out of order and put the automatic tool changer on first. So we're going to go unbox that here in a moment and then we'll come back and we'll start the install and assembly on that. For those of you subscribed to the channel who keep watching these videos, hey, I sure appreciate that subscription. If you're new to the channel and uh, you want to see more videos on the Tormach tooling and ultimately we're going to get into some knife videos pretty soon, hey, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I would sure appreciate it. But let's head on over and let's unbox this automatic tool changer and see what we've got. Let's go. All right, well, here's our box. This came via UPS. It's uh, 96 pounds, so pretty hefty box here. And, uh, you know, you'd think after doing YouTube for a while, I wouldn't have camera mess ups, but I actually just uncut it and flipped the lid open and realized that uh, I hadn't started the camera. So we'll sort of go through that process again and we'll take a look at what's inside. So the box is cut. Definitely some good solid packing inside and some foam, which is a good thing because the box barely survived the uh, UPS transport. But again, we've got good heavy solid foam around all the corners, so I don't think that the parts inside are any worse for wear. So they are looking good. So what we've got in here is our base plate. This is what's actually going to mount onto the machine. Good sturdy looking base right here. This is about 3 8 looking plate on the side, and maybe a quarter inch on the top. So again, some good, nice and heavy, solid piece there. And packed up underneath is the rest of the unit. So we've got all our wires. Uh, it's telling us to make sure that I've got uh, PathPilot 2.4 or higher installed before installing this. Obviously, I don't have a PathPilot console at all right now. So I won't be plugging this in. Obviously, I can't turn it on and activate it and finish that part of the setup process until that console comes in. So we'll make sure that we activate PathPilot, test out the rest of the machine, make sure we have the right software before we download this. So this will be focused on just mounting it on the machine. Here's our main mounting hardware. One of these has got a, a shim and everything so that we can change the angle and level this from what I've read in the instructions. So we'll go through all of that process. Not quite as much padding underneath, but I guess there's something under there. Yeah, it's got some, some foam on the underside as well. And obviously that's going to be a pretty heavy unit to pull out. Well, I don't have any place to put that, so we'll make sure that uh, we get this mounted and in place and have a, a place to go get this set on the machine before we pull that the rest of the way out of the box. So there is what our tool changer looks like. Let's see if I can get the plastic off of that. Now nah, we'll have to finish that when we get it out of the box. But there's how that came and showed up. So pretty excited to get that on there and get that hanging on the side of the machine. So. Let's head back over to the other shop. We've got some work to do. All right, so a couple things I want to knock out, pick up from the last video before we get to that uh, automatic tool changer. So on these bolts, I put them in. You can see we blew out all these washers on here. I actually called Tormach and they said that uh, some people put a regular flat washer on top of those that keeps them from squishing out. Or I can pull the screws out and put a little bit of silicone underneath. So I decided that in addition to putting a little bit of silicone underneath, I'm gonna go with some of these bonded rubber washers. So they're six mil, so a quarter inch should work pretty well. So I'm gonna go with some of these bonded rubber washers, put a little bit of silicone under those and screw them back in. Uh, all they said was if you're gonna use silicone, make sure you're putting it on the threads underneath. Don't try just putting it under the head. So anyway, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go around, pull all these and put some silicone on those. And the other thing that I need to do, I know it's a little hard to see there, but on the bucket, that goes for that oil skimmer. 
There were the little hold downs. I ended up not using those in the other video. Um, so two things. One, Tormach does have a set of instructions for that. If you Google it online, it comes up really well and it's a pretty easy one pager set of instructions. Uh, but they do want you to put these little bolts and the clamps on there to hold it down. And it makes sense. Once you fill that with coolant, then I'm assuming that that coolant's gonna wanna push that bucket up and it's gonna wanna float and, uh, and push up out of there. So I'm just gonna quickly put those on. I don't plan on putting them very tight so that way it's easy to just undo them by hand and move it out of the way to change and dump the oil out of that bucket. Uh, but we're gonna pop those on and then we're gonna put silicone, screw all those down. Once that's done, then we'll start on that automatic tool changer. All right, no surprise, getting those three screws in went relatively smooth. I'm not sure about the finger tight aspect of it. I think I'll probably have to use a wrench to pull those out anytime I want to empty that bucket. But otherwise, again, relatively simple. And again, the full instructions for installing that skimmer are online. Went ahead, pulled out the rest of these screws, and I was just using the Permatex Black Gasket Sealer Silicone is the silicone that I used underneath those. Uh, matched the other black paste that I'd put on there from before, so I thought it was a good color match to that. So went ahead, got all those screws, pulled out, reinstalled with that black Permatex silicone and those rubber bonded washers. I think that'll make for a much better sealing than what I had in there before. Definitely a couple screws on that drip pan that are a little bit tougher to get to than others. In addition to using that long Allen wrench, there's a couple places where you have to get in there with your short stubby Allen. Okay, I feel better about that. I think it'll seal a little better. Now it is on to the tool changer. All right, let's get this on here. So we're gonna get our buttons off, get these set screws out, get our plate mounted on there. Tormach has a really good video on installing this automatic tool changer. So I plan to buzz through it pretty quick unless I get hung up on something and I'll sort of pause and talk about it. But I think uh, they've got, like say, a really good video, so we should be able to just buzz through this pretty quick. Uh, we'll see if it goes as smooth as they show it. I would say it went nearly as smooth as the video they put out there. So the step-by-step -step instructions in the book are also really, really good. You go through, you pull off the original air button actuator for changing tools, pull out a couple of those original air lines, get all of that cleaned out. And then next step, you go over, you pull the studs out of the column that are in there, mount those four big uh, mounting bolts that they give you. One thing that was interesting, those mounting bolts, it's actually a stud and that big nut that you're looking at there is actually completely separate and it spins on the studs. So you just wanna make sure you get those fairly centered up. You get an equal amount of threads going into the column as what you have left over sticking out. It's not, uh, like I say, it's not like a regular bolt. It is just a big nut over top of a stud and uh, up in that top, Left corner is where you want to make sure you put the one that has a cam on it for adjustment later. I went ahead and used a level here. It didn't have that in the instructions, but I figured if I got it close to level at this part, maybe it would save me some work lining it up later on. Don't know if that correlated or not, but uh, just seemed like it was an easy enough thing to do there to get started. After that, the next step was to get in there and actually mount the air cylinder on the unit. Uh, I stop after this. I'll give you my only real pointer in that. Pretty simple. It's just one big bolt. Uh, the trickiest thing is just figuring out where you're going to balance that or sort of set it up on the foam in order to keep that 96 pound unit uh, sort of in a good place where you're able to operate and get that bolted on. Okay, pretty simple to attach the air cylinder, just like it said in the video, the book. What it doesn't really talk about is there's a, an end on it and you've got to make sure that that end catches in there so that it can push and pull. So pretty simple once you see it, but there is a, an end on the cylinder. You got to pull that out and attach that so that it hooks up there. Safety note, did I really try to lift this thing up there and put it on by myself? Or maybe my helper just didn't want to be on video. Whatever the case, let me tell you, it is a two-person lift like they put in the manual. Do not try to lift this up there by yourself. Once you get the first bolt in place, then one person can manage getting the rest of it bolted together and getting it adjusted and all set up after that. Don't lift it on your own. All right, this little cable is for an optional foot pedal. So since I don't have that, I'm just gonna, we'll tie that up out of the way here at the back. And it looks like there's gonna be some knockouts on the enclosure when we put that on. So for right now, not gonna run any of those. Okay, so we've got an air input back here and we've got 
drawbar top and drawbar bottom. They do a really nice job labeling everything, keeping you track what's going on. Uh, they didn't really mark these wires to get pulled out, but it was pretty obvious that those needed to get pulled out of there in order to give you free range of motion for that to be able to slide back and forth. So pretty easy to figure that out. All right, not much more I can do. The next steps are to level it and to do all that. So in order to do any of the leveling, I need to be able to center this table, lift that up out of the way. So we've got it in place. That is about what we are going to be able to do. Uh, I will check on running a couple of the airlines, although I'm pretty sure I need to put them through the knockout on the back. Yes, that is in fact the case. So I decided not to run any of the cables or wires until I got that back panel in place and put everything through the holes as designed. Well, pretty much the last couple of boxes for this have arrived. So this should be the PathPilot console and the hardware to mount it. So we're going to unbox those this morning. And then the only crate we have left to open after this is going to be for that enclosure. So I was actually going to build out the enclosure first. Called Tormach, checked with them, and they're like, yeah, once you got that automatic tool changer on there, you could build out that enclosure. But turned out I didn't actually have time last week to get that enclosure built. And now this has arrived. So we are going to go ahead, open these up today, plug this in, put some power to it, lift it up off the shipping block, get it all lined up and then we'll finish leveling it then we will get that enclosure built and then we'll have this all hooked up so let's take a look at how this shipped and packed i know that uh, i'm afraid that inside of this box um, i think i've got a bag of hardware that opened up i found a bolt on the, the sidewalk after ups left so i may have a little bit of hardware opened up in there let's see what they look like here okay nicely well packed in here some power, some hangers, USB adapters. Here is our main unit. That all looks looks good. And in here, just some more cables, bracket, and our jog controller. I'm guessing. Well, all of that looks good. Uh, let's see how this other box fared. Yeah, so here's my box of hardware that has blown open. So we'll see how many screws we're missing out of that. Nice, they put a QR code directly on a lot of their boxes to access instructions. So pretty tech savvy. So inside here, a whole bunch more cables, wiring. we got some of these collars. Overall, really impressed with the quality of the packing and shipping as they send this out. Uh, this box had the least amount of the heavy, dense foam in it with things just in bubble wrap. So this box did have the most damage overall, but again, all that damage consisted of one open bag of hardware, a couple of screws that came loose, and this one had a couple of scratches, a couple of paint chips on it. Uh, superficial damage, not even enough that I'm going to worry about. But I'm sure if I call Tormach, they'd be happy to send me a can of touch-up paint to, to take care of those if I wanted to. So again, just very impressed with the overall quality of the shipping. Hear lots of horror stories online of heavy machinery being shipped around and dropped and damaged. And Tormach really does a nice job of making sure they take care of everything they're sending you. So very well done. So what we're unpacking here now is going to be the main arm that that PathPilot console is going to mount on. So this is going to bolt right onto the side of that enclosure. Go on to there. Next piece here is going to be the keyboard tray. So nice keyboard tray that is going to mount under that PathPilot console. They give you a whole bunch of those aluminum collars. That's what's going to hold everything onto that arm. Let it pivot around. As I was unpacking the box, I did find a couple more loose screws, a couple more pieces of, of hardware in there. Uh, but again, I did have everything that I needed. There's a, some of the bolts to actually mount that, uh, that arm right onto the side of the enclosure that they don't provide. So I'll talk a little bit more about that when we go ahead and mount that in place. But overall, like I say, I had all the hardware that I needed. This keyboard tray, nice and solid. Um, feels pretty good. So again, overall, very nice setup in how this is going to mount on the side of the machine. You'll see all that when it gets done. So everything seems to have done all right on the trip. A little bit of paint here and there, but nothing too major. So this box we're not going to need for a little while. Let's go ahead and 
go read some instructions, get this controller hooked up enough that we can put power to the machine and get it moving, get the table moving, get the table centered up, and finish aligning our automatic tool changer, and then we'll go ahead and get that enclosure built out. Let's go. All right, so I brought over what I think are the key components we're gonna need to get this going. Looked in the book, and actually I clicked on the uh, barcode there. There's no different instructions for this. So we're picking up on page 48 in the manual. And because we have the Path Pilot console, we don't have the little Path Pilot controller to mount on. So basically, I'm just going to run some cables directly from the machine, plug everything into the bottom of this, like what I have in... Be back up the page. There we go. So page 48 and 49. So I'm going to plug everything into the bottom of it, like what we have here. And we should be able to plug this in and turn it on. See if we can get it figured out. If you've hooked up any desktop, laptop, or anything else, you'd be able to hook one of these up. Good pictures, good instructions, just plug and play. Have a little uh, Wi-Fi USB, plug in the keyboard, the mouse. They've got a nice extension cord that goes off of the e-stop reset button that comes originally on the machine. You put that extension on there, hook the power up to it, and just really straightforward in, uh, in getting that PathPilot console all hooked up together. If you had some kind of a wheeled roller bench, it would be nice to set this up right beside the machine. I've got it on a bench, the cables are long enough, but I do end up moving it closer here in a moment to make it a little bit easier to operate and test things. But last couple plug-ins, and we are just about ready to put power to this for the first time and let this boot up and go through the process of picking our machine. And we've got power to it. Everything is going as planned. Even got some cool LED lights up there on that Tormach to let you know when it's coming on and give you some different colors for different signals. So, pretty impressed so far. But let's get it closer to the machine so we can do a little bit of testing and push some buttons. All right, it's kind of funny. It's going to have us verify spindle function first, but I really don't want to run the spindle while it's sitting on that block. So I'm actually going to jump ahead and I'm going to verify axis function first and then we'll go back and once it's actually up then we'll verify the spin so we're going to power on the machine bring it out a reset and select the page up key on the keyboard to move the spindle head up remove discard the shipping block so all right we got page up page down let's get it turned back on page up And we can finally get rid of this. Use the keyboard to verify axis motion. Select the right arrow key and then the left arrow key. Left and then right. Yeah, the arrow keys are backwards. So if you select the right arrow key, the table moves left. All right, so we have motion. Okay, and then we've got down arrow, up arrow. And it takes some getting used to. The arrows go opposite of what you would think. You would think down would come towards you, but it goes away. And left and right are opposite. Page down and page up work as you would think. All right, so now we're gonna reference the axis. So we're going to always ref Z first. And then reference X. See if we can figure out this jog shuttle. So you've got 10 thou, 1 thou, or 10 thousandths of an inch on jog. So that works. Alright, now we need to verify spindle function. Okay, let's make sure we got the belt on the right place. Alright, so it says I'm in low here, and I am in low there. Okay, something didn't work there. Okay, 
Well, I don't seem to be getting the correct RPM here. All right, well, it seems to work. It runs, it tests. I'm gonna go ahead and center the table up because that's what we need to be able to work on the rest of the automatic tool changer. And then I will do a little bit of Googling to find out why my RPM is running about 70% faster than what it's supposed to be. Because it would appear that that belt is running on low range. I've got it on small on the motor. So yeah, the motor has to go around like twice to get that to go around once. So yeah, we'll try to Google why my RPM isn't matching. See what's going on with that. All right, well, we'll do a little bit of reading on that, but let me go ahead and punch in, get this thing centered up. Well, and actually we need to set up the automatic oiler so we can do that right now as well. Setting that up is as simple as pushing the test button on it for a few seconds, push some oil out, make sure there's no leaks, go back, set the timers on there for what they recommend in the instructions and you push just a few buttons and that automatic oiler is all set. Zeroed the table, or centered up the table. Let's power this down. Successful first run. We got it powered up, we got it operating. Now we're gonna square up that automatic tool changer and then once that's squared up, we can get that all plugged in, get the airlines hooked up. And then we will start assembling the enclosure on this. And gosh, we're getting pretty close to ready to run. Stay tuned. All right, I did a little reading. I didn't really find anything, but I'm looking at my control board here and I've got RPM and we can speed it up. And it happens to be set at about 75% on the plus side. So I believe that that is all that is going on with our RPM being off. So let me check that really quick. So I turned it back on. We'll have to recenter the table up here in a moment. But let me take a look at if this will reset our RPM. So if I set that to, okay, it kind of has a little notch there where it wants to click in. The notch isn't quite lined up on center, but maybe we can find a way to play with that after. But on the slider, I can definitely see that that's at 100%. So same thing with my feed rate. Let me get that to 100%. And then my max velocity. All right, not sure what that's about, but that fixed it. Super simple. We don't have to reprogram anything. This knob just wasn't set at 0%. So let's see, that one is just off a little bit as well. Yeah, we'll have to see if we can't sum up with a way to adjust these knobs and get them lined up on there. So now if I go back to 1,000, it's running dead on 1,000 RPM. Okay, we have solved that problem. So that is good. Let's see if we can figure out how these knobs come off. Perfect, they just pop right on and off. Line that up. They do have a spline on them, but let's see if we can't get that spline lined up a little closer to our 100% here. All right, looks like we're either a little plus or a little minus. All right, that one lined up pretty much right on the money. Let's just try one more. All right, that one's gonna be just a hair below. That one is good. Okay, we got that figured out. Let me punch in our center of the table code again. All right, let's get that ATC set up on there. For all you CNC experts, I'm sure that is super painful watching me try to run this machine as I have to read instructions for every button push and every little G code I am punching in. So I can only hope that that's going to get a little better and smoother over time. Very similar with this automatic tool changer setup. If I were to have to go install this again tomorrow, I think it would go a lot smoother. The, uh, the video on the install on this is really good. Uh, these steps right here where you are squaring up the x-axis and then squaring it up to the y-axis, all that I felt really good about, felt smooth. It wasn't until I got to trying to line the spindle up on the tool tray. The instructions say you're looking for an equal gap all around. I took that literally of kind of left-right and that amount of gap I tried putting on the back of the tool changer as well. And it turned out that the tool changer just about needed to touch. I finally started looking at where it was lining up, where the tool holder was lining up on the center of the spindle, and I realized that it needed to be over a lot more. And every time you go make an adjustment on sort of moving that tool changer around, then you have to start over again on squaring up the x-axis and the y-axis. So 
went round and round a couple of times with that, would make a movement, would re-square it up again. Uh, so a little bit tedious doing it for the first time, but again, it uh, really followed what the instructions explained and how they laid it out. It's one of those where after you've done it once, I think you'd be 10 times as fast at doing it the second time. First time through, a little bit slow, a little bit tedious. Nothing very difficult about it, just not really knowing what you're doing. You're kind of bouncing around. So uh, again, follow the instructions, watch the video. And in my case, I really needed that tool changer to be close and you're sort of planning ahead for the center of the spindle. And when you get to the automatic or when you actually run it, then that is what you're going to use to eyeball it onto the tool. Uh, the other piece I noticed is when you're squaring it up on the Y axis, just sort of pay attention. It likes to move inside the tool holder inside the little clamp a little bit. So you want to make sure that you've kind of eyeballed that and have that sitting in there pretty square before you're worried about squaring it up on the table. So just pay attention to all the different pieces and parts that can move and that will really help you as you get this alignment all set up and get this all put together. I will say though, it built up my confidence just running the machine, moving it up and down, moving it back and forth. Great learning process as a just push more buttons and just get a better sense of how the machine runs and how everything works. So I did enjoy that part of it. Uh, the whole build out process, you're there, you're hanging out with it for a couple hours. All of that does just help you learn the machine and get a little bit more comfortable with it for when it's time to actually push that start button and go and let a program rip and see what happens. I'm going to be... Uh, Closer to feeling better about that when the time comes, I think. All right, so next step is to hook up the ATC. But in order to do that, we need to hit knockouts and everything on the back of the enclosure. So we're going to start putting that enclosure piece in place back there. So let's get this next crate opened up. Okay, kind of a tight squeeze in here. Gonna be excited to get this piece opened up and off of the floor since it's keeping me from getting to some things. So let's get this last crate opened up, take a look inside and start assembling this enclosure. Once again, another well-packed piece of gear. This is the only crate that wasn't just a nail together. It had these bend down tabs and the metal trim all around. Took a couple extra minutes to get it opened up. Also, once I got the top off, I wanted to make sure I bent all those tabs back down. So as I was walking around it, I didn't cut myself. But uh, here's our big reveal. Nice looking pieces inside. There is assembly time. Well, there's our last big reveal of the Tormach assembly. So let's find our back corner panel and we'll start working our way around, getting this thing put together. I decided to go ahead and get everything out of this crate. So those first two boxes pulled the lights out, some of the cables, the door rails. Decided to go ahead and get everything unwrapped and sort of staged around the shop so it would make it a lot easier for this assembly as it started to go. Also gave me an opportunity to get that crate off of the floor and out of there. So everything just wrapped up in that plastic wrap. Again, all the paint came through really nice. I don't think there was a single scratch on any of these pieces. So very well packaged, very well taken care of. And uh, got everything unpacked, laid out. Everything is labeled really well. Let's you know when you're following on the instructions. They have stickers on all these pieces so you can read exactly what the parts are. And, uh, and that really helped when it came to the assembly time. Uh, the other piece I'll share is I called Tormach to understand, you know, what do they recommend for putting this together in the way of a silicone or something to seal it to make sure you're not going to have leaks. And their recommendation was Sikaflex 1A. They did let me know that it is fairly permanent. So next time I move the machine, I'm going to need to move it completely assembled. So I assume that means that this stuff secures strongly enough that if you try to take it apart, you're going to be bending up this sheet metal. So I'm assuming that's what that means. Uh, but I will tell you that the color match is awesome. So I'm glad I called them and got their recommendation. The What they call Sikaflex 1A in limestone color is just about a perfect match for the white. And the Sikaflex 1A in dark bronze is about a perfect or pretty good match for the gray color, the gray parts of the machine. And you'll see that more when we go through the assembly process on this and you'll see it all going together. 
And uh, again, I hope you like this narration over top of the high speed. Uh, overall time to build my machine based on the video files I have uh, was about a total of 23 hours. So I had about nine hours of video in that uh, first part, and I had about 14 hours of video in this part. So about 23 hours total, and I decided to narrate over top of the building out of this enclosure. So hopefully that helps. We'll talk through some of the key pieces as it goes on. Uh, but after we get this first panel on, we're going to wire up the tool changer, and we're actually going to go in there and finish setting that up, watch the tool changer run a couple of times, and then we'll come out and build out the rest of the enclosure. So you can see just used a caulking gun to apply that Sikaflex, and uh, goes on pretty much just like silicone goes on really well. And this panel, it's pretty clear. It all bolts together uh, really well. I think in the whole assembly, I had three bolts that didn't want to cooperate. Uh, one of them, I just put a bolt and a nut through. One of them, I tapped it out 1032 so that I could just put a different size screw in there. And one of them, I figured out that, hey, for whatever reason, it was a five millimeter instead of a six millimeter like all the other ones around it. And... Uh, took care of it that way. So again, all the holes lined up, just no struggle at all in building this machine out. It went really, really well. And I think we're just about getting to the part here where we're almost going to be ready to start running lines for this automatic tool changer, running the, the new airlines, and running the, the power cables. Really good labels on all those. So really easy to, uh, to follow the instructions to run that and run everything where you need to. So zip stripped them, tried to do, keep it fairly clean, keep it fairly organized. They give you plenty of lines, so you're not having to try to stretch anything. You're cutting off the excess, uh, no shortage of, of any of the lengths of materials that they give you through the whole process. So that all goes nice and smooth. And I am glad that, uh, you know, I was able to get that tool changer on there before assembling the enclosure. Um, you know, in their video, even they show it going through that opening there on the back. So it is possible to put that automatic tool changer on after you have the enclosure built, but sure is a lot easier to set it in place uh, before that takes, or before that enclosure is on there. So getting the last of those airlines run, just about ready to get in there and start it back up and test this thing out. Of course, you got to read a little bit of instructions again and make sure I can keep up with what I'm doing and what's happening with this new machine. We're getting there. You can see on the screen that the automatic tool changer shows up. Get that tab. You tell the machine that you've plugged it in and that you've hooked it up. And just, again, walking through all the instructions on how to go through that setup process. Uh, tells you where all your different adjustments are to change links. You can lengthen the air cylinder a little bit. You know, what you can adjust, how you can turn the carriage when you need to. And just get everything lined up as best you possibly can. Zero the machine so it knows exactly where it wants to be on that Z height for tool changes. And the book walks you step by step through every single one of those adjustments. And again, really a nice interface for pushing all the buttons and making all those changes. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, I say we have a functioning automatic tool changer. Let's build out the rest of this enclosure and then we pretty much have a ready to run machine. So let's get the rest of these pieces put on here and we'll call this video a wrap. I think that is working all right. Well, sit back and enjoy the show because even in super high speed, it's going to take about 20 minutes for me to build out this whole enclosure. I'll talk through some of the highlights, but I don't plan to talk your ear off for the whole 20 minutes. So maybe a little bit of a mix of me narrating some of the highlights and just some good silence as you get to watch this thing all go together like a big giant Lego piece. So here's where I run into my first bolt that I have troubles with right there. And uh, since later on I found one of these bolts that was a 5mm instead of a 6mm, I'm guessing that that one is probably 5mm as well if I went and tried to put one in there. Eventually, I ground the end of that 6mm bolt to a point to try to get it to start. And finally, I just ended up, I found a 8x32 screw with a nut, and that's what I ended up finally putting in that hole since I just could not get that 6mm bolt to go in there. So, no problem. One of only three issues that I had with bolts on the whole machine didn't slow me down for too long and just kept on moving around. So you work your way around from the left back, you work your way around towards the right. Again, no problems with holes lining up, no issues there. The issue that I did figure out right about this point was only being two inches away from the wall, those screws to hold that window in do go in from the back side towards the inside. So they're easy to put together when the window's not in, but it's not going to be easy to go and tighten those screws up after the fact. So going back, yes, if I'd have put this maybe four or five inches out from the wall, that probably would have been easier to tighten up those bolts. Um, reality is, I guess I'll find out how bad that window leaks once I get it all together. I was able to put pliers and vice grips on the back side of those screws and sort of suck them up a little bit tight after I got the window in there. If it's a problem, I'll probably just have to go with some clear silicone and just seal that window in there completely if I'm having a leak problem. So that's my one learning. My big tip is you probably need to have enough room to get to those screws on that end of the machine. I tried to put it in there just a little bit too tight. So, good learning. That's about the one, one of the things I would go back and do a little bit different if I was going to install the machine, is I'd give myself another three inches over there, take up a little bit of real estate on the other side of my shop, but I think it would probably just make any time you have to get to that window a little bit easier. The rest of the room over there, no other part of having it that close to the wall has been an issue. And I'm hoping that ultimately that window isn't really going to leak too much, too bad. So maybe really a non-problem in the, in the long run as well. And really easy to find all the pieces the way they've labeled them. Easy to find what size screw you're supposed to use where. Most everything is just two different kinds of screws. The ones on the electrical panel are already in there and ready to go. So just really nicely labeled. Really easy to follow all the steps to go through and get this assembled. Takes a little bit of time, but it was honestly kind of a fun process. So always get to enjoy something a little bit more when you know that you built it and assembled it and put it all together yourself. You can also see that for the most part, I did most of this by myself. Definitely need some help lifting a couple of heavy pieces in. Uh, getting the machine in place needed help for that. But the rest of the build out, you are able to do you know, 90% of that by yourself. If you had a helper, probably go a little bit faster. Uh, but it is definitely something that you can move all these pieces around and you can manage doing that by yourself if, uh, if that's what you need to do. I know this is long, but I figured I would leave this entire assembly in there. I couldn't find anywhere online where it shows the build out of the full enclosure. So again, for anybody that has one of these machines coming, thought you might want to see the whole thing go together and just understand exactly what you're getting into, help you plan for it. So by all means, you may be fast forwarding and zipping through this, but hopefully you enjoy just getting to see the whole thing go together.
can see how well that Sikaflex color matches. So really just a little bit darker on the gray, but by the time you wipe it off, it's just about disappears. And same thing where it comes in contact with the white. Tried to give you a nice top shot here as we put the top panels on and not quite ready to put the lights in place yet, I don't think, but tried to give you some good camera angles and see this whole thing going together. Also gives you an idea of why I did put it only two inches out from the wall, because I don't have a lot of room. This really is about the biggest CNC machine I have room for in my shop in its current configuration, so didn't have a lot of extra space around it to, to leave any more room than I absolutely needed to. Connect the left side and the right side together. And now we've pretty much got a full frame all the way around. Clean up a little bit of that extra Sikaflex where it's squeezed out there. All right, now it's time to get into building these door bumpers and door bearings. So again, really quality feeling materials here. A nice heavy rod that those doors are going to slide on. And uh, some nice slide bushings and good rubber bumpers that those are going to be up against. So nice solid feeling doors after those all go together. Pretty simple, just stacking parts together and get ready to go bolt these rods in place inside the machine. So this is another area where it's really nice to operate through that open window to put these door rods in place. So on the other side, since you can't operate through that opening, have to do everything through the front and the back. So it makes it a little bit tighter to get that other door hung up over there, not being able to come through the side window, but it was still manageable to come in through the ATC back panel and get that door mounted. We'll see that here in just a couple of minutes. A little, little bit more of a challenge, but definitely doable. Uh, it does take two people to get those doors in place, though. That's another one of the jobs. That pretty hard to try to hold that door up in place and get some screws in, so had to go find a helper to assist with that part of it.
These windows have a sticker on them. They put, want you to replace the windows every two years, so there's a place you can mark down the installation date. Uh, they aren't glass. They are a heavy plexiglass. I think about quarter-inch thick plexiglass. Here comes my helper to help get this door up in place. So it's just a matter of lining up those slide brackets, getting them all oriented the right way. And uh, once you get a couple of bolts in, then the rest of it all lines up and goes pretty quick. And then fairly simple adjustment after I had both doors in place, I just pulled them shut and made sure they lined up nice and square on each other when they were closed. So here I am going in through that back opening. So as you saw, it only took a second, just went in through the back opening, got the first screw started, holding the door up, and then uh, able to do all the rest of it through the front opening there. And there we go, doors are in place. Take a moment, square them up a little bit there. Pretty quick and easy adjustment and then move on to uh, getting the door handles in place. Uh, that's another recommendation from Tormach is on those adjusting holes on those brackets. Nice big hole there. So after that part was done, after you've got them adjusted, you can go fill in that hole with some Sikaflex since oh, the screw only covers about half of it there. So another little spot to make sure you seal up and avoid any leaks once you get your coolant going. There's some little trim pieces that go on the ends of those doors just to, I think, prevent leaks, prevent anything from coming around the side. And then I don't have the door switch so there's a couple of plates that end up filling in those holes where the door switch would go. And here, putting the lights on, they have instructions in there to make sure you test your lights with a ohmmeter, make sure there's the right amount of resistance between the, the clamp bracket and the negative side of the plug. So followed the instructions. I checked both of mine. My light seemed fine, so I went ahead and installed those. Um, I'm not sure if Tormach had some kind of an issue with some lights, but that's right there in the book on what they want you to test with those lights with an ohmmeter before you put them on. And if you have any kind of an issue, you call them, and I would assume they're going to send you some updated lights or whatever that issue may be. All right, here's another one of those things I would go back and change. I put this side window on here, so I went ahead and installed both windows at this point. And we're gonna find out here in a minute that when it comes time to mount that Path Pilot console arm onto the front of the machine, you're gonna to wanna to operate through that window again to be able to do that. So I put that window in, get the other one in, and I end up pulling that right side window back out here in a few minutes when it comes time to mount that Path Pilot console. Not a big problem though. It only takes about a minute, maybe two minutes total to pull the window out. It's just a couple of screws to loosen. And on that right side window, it's really, really easy to do. Left side window, eh, a little bit more of a challenge. Here you can see I'm using some pliers to <clears throat> twist those screws from the back side to pull up enough tension on there that I'm hoping that window will seal pretty well. You put one screw on the top center there and then it hangs that door and then it's really easy to pull all the other screws in around that. So again, really nice design feature how they did that. They make everything one person operable and fairly easy to, to manage and maintain. Here's where I was missing some hardware. So when it comes to mounting this arm on here, they mention using six millimeter bolts with nuts. Uh, they didn't provide any. I had some quarter inch bolts with nuts that I ended up using. 
Uh, they also talked about the template for marking the holes on there. Uh, mine did not come with a template. Easy enough to grab a piece of paper and make one. I just centered it up on, uh, on this side over here on the right side. I centered it. And the main thing you have to make sure is that the door is closed when you're drilling through there. You don't want to drill into your door. The other issue is the hardware. They talked about the bolts and the nuts going from the outside to the inside, and then you may have to make some adjustments on the inside if the hardware is running into your door. So I ended up, I had some quarter inch uh, Allen head bolts or hex head bolts that had a really thin head, and I put them from the inside out. They were black hardware, so they had a black nylock nut, so I put the nylock nut on the outside. And that way I had a very thin hex head on the inside and it didn't interfere with the doors at all. So that's what I would recommend is it doesn't come with hardware. So if you have to pick up your own, I would pick up hardware that has a nice thin head, put it from the inside out and it doesn't interfere. If I had tried to put the nut on the inside, I think I would have had more of an issue. So once you get the top in place, use a level, line it up, just drilled the bottom while it was in place and bolted that all on there. Then go ahead and put the window back in. Then it's time to start mounting, cleaning up all the collars. So all those aluminum collars, they have some like a Teflon tape or something that you're lining the inside of them with so that they spin and turn on there pretty easy. Mount these brackets onto the side of your PathPilot console. Mount the aluminum brackets onto the bottom of those. Do the same thing with mounting one of those onto the keyboard tray. And, uh, and then pretty easy to just get it in place and put the other half of those collars on. And uh, pretty simple design and gives you a nice swivels back and forth. Pretty solid feel on that. This was the other bolt that I had issues with. I went to screw one of those in there and got stuck. So I just grabbed a 1032 tap. And that went nicely into the existing hole, didn't have to drill it out at all, and then just stuck a 1032 screw in there to fix that one. So that was my third screw that I had issues with on the whole build. and Probably just me. I probably just cross-threaded it going into that hole and caused the problem. So took care and fixed that one and got it together. All right, everything mounts up. I found the, the little hanger for the jog shuttle. Originally, I thought it was part of the little box for the, you know, the little power block for the overall console, but uh, only half of it was for the power block. The other half of it was actually the hanger for the jog shuttle. So there you can see that power block box right there. And time to start running all the cables. Uh, not too much trouble getting all the cables to run through. And uh, I just put a little bit of tape on the other end of that. Make sure that uh, I wasn't going to pull that plastic tubing out of the other place where it goes into the machine. Ran all the cables, everything, except uh, I almost forgot the Ethernet cable. Since that one isn't connected on either end of the machine. So I had to go back and do that Ethernet cable last. And by then I had a few other pieces in there. So you see I had to use a fish tape to get that piece of Ethernet cable all the way through. Uh, but everything else, pretty smooth. Or actually, I guess that was a USB cable I had to use the fish tape on. But not too hard pushing all the cables through there. A lot of room in that little side panel down there too. You could even use that for some storage. You know, I've got the cables down in there now, but there's a whole empty shelf. You definitely have room. You could put some tools, put something down inside that storage spot there on that right hand side. And here, cleaning up the last of the wiring, put on some wire ties, and that's pretty much putting a wrap on this build of this enclosure. Well, there we go. There is a final build out on this uh, Tormach 1100 MX. 
Took a little longer for some of these finishing steps today than I thought, but I am happy with it. It is together. You know, I've narrated over top of the video a little bit, tried to plug in some things that I would do different where some of the challenges were, but overall pretty happy with how it came together. Tool changer is working. Now it's time for me to get busy and do a little bit better at uh, Fusion, a little bit better at programming, and then get in here and make some cuts. But let's go ahead and fire this up one last time now that it is all together and done. We'll see what those lights look like in there. Then we'll close out this video. Well, those lights are definitely bright. That is pretty impressive. Yeah, that looks good in there. Console came together well. It's looking good. Need to get a mouse pad on there. Piece of paper will work for a mouse pad for right now. All right, so we are up. Take it out of e-stop, reset. Referenced well. Let's see, our jog is working. There's Z. Everything is moving. It's working. Well, YouTube, that's going to be a wrap for this video. I hope you enjoyed this series as we went through and put together this Tormach 1100 MX over the, uh, the last couple of weeks. A little more time in there, but you got to see the entire process. And if you've got one of these machines on the way, hopefully that gave you some ideas on where it goes, exactly how all the pieces fit together, and just everything that's entailed in putting this whole machine together from start to finish. If you've already subscribed to the channel, hey, sure appreciate you watching these videos. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You'll know when we get the next videos out. Coming up, I've actually had a, uh, somebody ask me to put an RC jet engine on a scooter. So I've got the uh, hardware, the brackets, the assembly of that coming out on a video here pretty soon. And then after that, we're going to get into some knife making and get into some uh, working some parts on this Tormach as I learn how to use it and start getting into producing some of the knives, which is the whole point and why we got this one. So again, thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you're out in your own shop, working on some projects of your own, making some chips of your own. And until I get that next video out, take care.